by uh, Judge McCormick when he was just judge before he became presiding judge, before Judge Keller. And you know, Judge McCormick used to be a Democrat. That's all I'm gonna say back in the day. All right, do the rules of evidence apply in these bail hearings? No. no. That was like from way over here. They do not apply. Somewhere over here, like Tiva. Oh, Dr. Jennings. I'm totally screwing up the video. I'm sorry, David Williams. All right. Statutory considerations. So we've got five statutory. These you all know. I know you know, right? Sufficiently high to give reasonable assurance it will be complied with. This, I couldn't even find something like not used as an instrument of oppression. It's like, um, yeah, okay. You want all these people to pay all this money. They don't have it. Okay, they have to consider the nature and circumstance of the offense. These people are all criminally trespassing on baseball stadium fields. So, I mean, that's not serious, is it? Man, have you ever seen anyone chased down? It's like awesome, you think it's capital murder. They got the whole, like, kit and caboodle running after them. That guy, in hair, he's from the Astros there in the flag. They said, man in weird tank top runs on field. <laughs> How weird is that tank top? All right. Got to consider ability to make bail and the safety of the victim community. I mean, that's some considerations that they can use however they so desire. In the manual, there's some case law on all of that. You know, and I even cite the Durst case. You know, like I'm sure they were considering the safety of the community with him. All right, so then we have our Harris County rules, which come from, actually, that case I said, Meg McCormick, it's ex parte Ruback. So what Harris County was is they've taken and made a rule codifying this case, and it's rule 4.2.3.1.5. Uh, and that's supposed to be a picture like a mirror image, like matching dogs. I, I had a hard time finding something before that. So these are, besides those statutory considerations, these are, I think, where you will be doing your work, these other considerations. So the length of the sentence, nature of the offense, but their work record, family ties, length of residency, ability to make the bond, prior criminal record, conformity with previous bond conditions, other outstanding bonds and aggravating factors. That's where you will, I think, be toiling away in making those distinctions and telling your story, your diamond in the, in the dirty hands. You've got to find something in there. Like, she shows up to work every day at 6.15 a.m. I don't know what she does, but she's there. That's what Alex could say about me. Like, I'm not sure what she's doing, but she's there. Okay, the factors are to be analyzed individually, and they're fact-driven. And again, that's where you will be listening for five minutes and then interviewing for the other five. All right, uh, bond conditions. There are so many, they cannot be counted. I mean, it's just like, I had no idea why they have all these statutes to control people. Like that over-conditioning they talked about, it's insane. And you all know it, if you're in the trial court every day. When I get on appeal, I'm like, oh, okay, they screwed up. They messed up, you know, one, two, five, nine, eight, three, you know, whatever. And I'm gonna step again off my bail. A lot of these conditions require money. And I am working on a project. I made Sarah Wood assign an intern to help me. Thank you, Sarah. To craft motions to stop revoking people and threatening people when they can't pay for these conditions. They're LFOs, legal financial obligations. And um, it's unconstitutional to revoke someone because they can't pay. But I think the problem is, let's not force them to not pay. Let's try and, before we get there, let's not impose these if we don't have to, or we can't make, they can't pay. We know that right now, Judge. So instead of waiting for them to fail, I imagine the ones on family violence are statutory, 
So I bet they do, and there's DWI ones that are statutory, I bet there's some form, although I don't know. But I would imagine any that are statutory are probably imposed then, any of the other special ones like GPS or whatever, probably the judge. But there's like literally like forms in the statute on imposing these conditions on people. It's like, yeah, you all people know. I have no idea because, again, one inch deep, working towards three. But it's, I, I don't want you to not think of sort of the, the broader constitutional implications with these court costs and financial obligations. You know, they were talking about the John and Laura Arnold Foundation. That's one thing they're working very hard on too, or challenging court costs, and they put together uh, this Harvard group that have studied court costs in every state, and you can look up every state. It's pretty awesome. All right, it's really not, but I like it, so I'm sorry. I love it. All right, this is post-hearing, but I'm just putting this in there. You all know this. You must get affordable bond uh, if the state is not ready for trial within 90 days for a felony, 30 days for class A, 15. Let's say on the 91st day they're not ready. What are you going to do? What? Bottle rent. Jackie Carpenter, did I already give you a present? All right, you get another one because I love you so much. And I'm getting down to the bare minimum. You got yourself some gum to keep you awake. Anyway, file a writ. Are we going to file a motion? No. I don't want to see any motions to reduce bond. I don't want to see motions on this. This is where a motion will get you. Nowhere. A writ, it's appealable. Motion is not. And when you do these writs, make a record. That's just, again, I'm off on my own tangent here because I've done the appeal in the office of a writ on this and it was just the writ and I was like, where's the record? Oh, well, you got the writ. Yeah, no, no, I need more. So I tried to make the best argument and the Court of Appeals is like, no, no, we need more. So, all right. And the 90 days, even if the state says, well, we were ready, yeah, it might not be good enough. Okay. Conditioning release on matters such as victim or community safety concerns deprives the statute of any meaning. This is my last slide. I was told to speak quickly. But I just want you to be thinking like what we've been trained earlier about how to change the narrative, how to change the story. This is not the sole concern, and if it becomes the sole concern, then really there's no need for bail because unless it's a victimless offense, which according to them, even drugs has you know, got victims. So Harris County has its own rules. Uh, it has its own procedures, which we are working on that Alex is going to be tr you know, sharing with all of us. This is sort of a basic primer on the law of bail. But I really want you to um, know that a lot of this is untested, you know, appellate-wise and trial court-wise. And so anything we do to make some positive changes would be good. So thank you very much. <laughs>